Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about uh, pulse code modulation. Myself, uh, Dr. Arun, Professor. So in this uh, particular uh, topic, we are going to discuss about uh, uh, how we are converting analog signal into digital signal by using pulse code modulation. This is the fundamental concept within a digital communication system. So here at the end of this video, you will be able to understand the basic working principles of PCM. So here the objective of the PCM is the pulse code modulation is a method used to convert analog signal into digital signal or digital data. So that is the main objective of this particular concept of pulse code modulation. So in any digital communication system, the analog signal, the physical quantities will be converted as digital signal in terms of uh, zeros and ones. So what is the main objective of converting analog signal into digital signal? The core objective is increasing the quality of the signal at the receiver end. That is the main objective of converting analog signal into digital signal. We are enabling the digital transmission. To perform this particular operation, so we are doing three different processes. One is called the first process sampling process. The continuous time signal analog signal is there that analog signal will be converted as a discrete time signal by using sampling process. Afterwards, after performing the sampling, we are performing the quantization process. This is called a roundup process. Then after performing the quantization, that signal will be applied towards the encoder. The output of the encoder in terms of uh, zeros and ones uh, we are representing. So the input is analog the final output of the pulse code modulation is in terms of zeros and ones or digital. So this digital signal only we are going to transmit to a long distance by using different digital modulation technique. So here at the receiver side, the input is digital. The final output again we are converting as a analog signal because as a human beings, we are able to understand only the analog signal, not digital signal. So this is the entire uh, block diagram of uh, pulse code modulation. In this pulse code modulation block diagram consists of uh, transmitter, transmission path and receiver. So in the transmitter side, source of continuous time message signal that is called information source. So in this block consists of as per this particular block diagram, I am going to explain by using the audio signal. Then the information source must be a mic. That mic will be convert analog signal or your physical quantity or acoustic signal into electrical signal. After converting that electrical signal while analyzing your analog signal, the maximum and the minimum frequency of the analog signal is 20 to 20 kilohertz. That means the maximum frequency of the audible signal is 20 kilohertz. That signal only applied towards the low pass filter. This low pass filter is also called as anti-aliasing filter. So here this will restrict the frequency as maximum frequency as 20 kilohertz above 20 kilohertz like 21, 22, 23, whatever it may be, above 20 kilohertz frequencies and all blocked by using low pass filter because we have to satisfy the sampling theorem in the next block. So the sampling theorem specifying the FS is greater than or equal to 2 FM. So that means if the input frequency is 20 kilohertz, the sampling frequency must be greater than 2 into 20 40 kilohertz. That means greater than 40 kilohertz is the minimum requirement of the sampling rate. If sampling theorem fails, obviously the aliasing effect will introduce in the corresponding signal. So we have to eliminate that aliasing effect by introducing the low pass filter before sampling. That is the main objective of an anti-aliasing filter. So here the input signal is 20 kilohertz. 
So that 20 kiloid signal only allowed it towards the sampler. Sampler will performing the sampling operation. That means continuous time signal will be converted as discrete time signal. So then to perform that particular operation, we are going to use the sampling theorem. The sampling theorem specifies Fs is greater than 2Fm. 2 into 20, 40 kiloids is the minimum requirement. Then we are performing the quantization process. So whatever may be the amplitude uh, present after performing the sampling, you are doing the roundup process by using quantizer that we will discuss in the next slide. So next we are performing the encoding process, the resultant output is zeros and ones. Then that zeros and ones will be transmitted towards the long distance by using regenerative repeaters. So after traveling certain distance, the information signal is attenuated and distorted. That signal will be regenerated by using the regenerative repeater to maintain the highest signal to noise ratio and quality of the signal. So the receiver side, we have the first block is regeneration or regenerative repeater circuit, then decoder. Then we are performing the by using reconstruction filter, we are reconstructing analog signal by using sample and hold circuit. Then that signal will be applied to the destination like your loudspeaker. So that loudspeaker will convert electrical signal into acoustic signal. We are able to hear the audio signal. This is the overall picture about pulse code modulation. So here the little bit detailed version we are going to discuss one example that is called telephone line in the telephone normal telephone line the maximum frequency of the audio signal allowed it is 4 kilohertz after analyzing the audio signal the majority 90 percentage of the human beings or 90 percentage of the information falling within 4 kilohertz so that's why Within 4 kilohertz itself, we are achieving the maximum quality of the audio signal. So in the telephone lines, the maximum frequency allowed it to perform the pulse code modulation is only 4 kilohertz. So in the 4 kilohertz signal, it is a continuous time signal and also continuous amplitude signal. First, we are applying to the sampler or sampling process. In the sampling process, the continuous time signal will be converted as a discrete time signal. So we are make it as a samples. So the discrete time signal and also continuous in amplitude. This amplitude of the each and every sample is continuous because that will represent the instantaneous amplitude of the message signal. When we are going to interconnect all the envelopes of the sampled signal, you will get a original message signal. So here first we are performed the continuous time signal is converted as a discrete time signal by using pulse uh, sampling process sorry. So then after sampling your information signal is applied towards quantizing process or quantizer. Here the quantizer consists of number of standard quantization levels. So that quantization levels are representing standard voltage levels. So for example, 1 to 2 volt, 1 volt to 2 volt, how many different voltages available means infinitive different voltages are available. In that particular situation, encoding is very difficult. So that's why we have to convert that continuous amplitude sampled signal to discrete amplitude by performing the roundup process by doing the quantization process. After performing the quantization, each and every sample amplitude are rounded up to the nearest standard quantization level. Then finally your signal will be discrete in time and also discrete in amplitude. As per the uh, uh, telephone line operation, input is 4 kilohertz sampled by using the corresponding sampler is almost 8 kilohertz or 8000 samples per second. In the sampler, we have to satisfy the sampling theorem. Fs is greater than or equal to 2fm means. So your fm or information signal frequency is 4 kilohertz multiply with 2. That is a minimum requirement 8 kilohertz or 8000 samples per second. That samples are quantized by using 256 quantization levels. 
as per this particular picture having totally eight or nine quantization levels only available but practically the corresponding telephone lines then a quantization number of levels requirement is 256 then this 256 quantization levels having individual standard voltages then that sampled or quantized samples individual samples applied to the encoder that encoder will release us as a corresponding binaries so each and every sampled signal will be converted as a binary signal this is called pulse code modulation process here we have one example the corresponding sine wave uh, is a input signal for the sampler after performing the sampling process the signal will be sliced or converted as a discrete time signal so in the discrete time signal based on the instantaneous amplitude of each and every sample for example this is the first sample second sample third sample in the third sample the corresponding voltage is 7.4 the nearest standard quantization level this is the quantization levels so then this quantization levels representing what is the nearest voltage for example the third sample is 7.4 the nearest standard level is 7 so this 7.4 will be converted as 7 so that 7.4 to 7 conversion process the difference voltage actual sample voltage is 7.4 the converted voltage is 7 the difference is 0.4 that 0.4 is called quantization error if you want to reduce this quantization error we have to introduce n number of quantization levels in between then your quality of the signal will improve so then after performing the quantization process we are performing the encoding process you can see here each and every sample will be converted as a binary signal for example i am going to take this particular sample this particular sample the nearest quantization level is this particular standard quantization level you can see here the binary is 1011 based on this particular sample the output encoded output is 1011 based on the second sample the output nearest quantization level is this particular 1001 then the output because of this sample 1001 similar manner each and every sample values are encoded and released as a digital signal so now the entire sine wave will be converted as in terms of binaries this is called pulse code modulation process in this uh, pulse code modulation process uh, different uh, sampling rates are available if you need high quality of the signal or high quality of the audio signal we have to increase the number of sampling rate so the minimum sampling rate we have discussed is still now 8000 samples per second the telephone standard they are utilizing 11000 samples per second the cd quality requires similar manner if you are keep on increasing the sampling rate the quality of the audio signal will be definitely increased so when we are going to perform this pulse code modulation what is the bit rate and what is the bandwidth requirement to transmit this particular pulse code modulated signal here you know the sampling rate is fs is greater than or equal to 2 fm the minimum sampling rate is called nyquist rate fs is equal to 2 fm so here the number of quantization levels represented q is equal to 2 power v v representing how many number of bits utilized to represent one sample that is called the number of bits per sample the bit rate is represented as small r is equal to v into fs so v representing number of bits fs representing number of samples per second so the bandwidth bt greater than or equal to 1 by 2 r so the 50 percentage of the bandwidth is minimum requirement to transmit your corresponding 50 percentage of the bit rate is the minimum requirement to transmit pulse code modulated signal with one example we can explain so you can see uh, whatever may be the example the corresponding we want to digitize the human voice what is the bit rate assume 8 bits per samples 
we are already discussed the human voice the maximum frequency we are considered 4000 hertz that means 4 kilohertz so the sampling rate requirement as per the nyquist sampling rate is 2 into 4000 8000 samples per second so the bit rate is 8000 multiply with 8 bits because in the problem they are represented 8 bits then final output is 64000 bits per second that is called 64 kbps so the bandwidth requirement is 50 percentage of the bit rate. So the bit rate is 64 kbps, 1 by 264 is called 32 kbps is the minimum requirement to transmit the audio signal. To improve the quality of the audio signal, we can do some process. One is called increasing sampling rate. Another one is increasing number of quantization levels. It will reduce the quantization error increasing sampling rate and also increasing quantization level will demand more bit rate and bandwidth we have to compromise with bit rate and bandwidth to improve your quality of the signal advantages of uh, pcm it is robust against noise and interference uniform transmission quality efficient signal to noise ratio and bandwidth trade off it provides secured data communication by performing the different encryption and decryption process. It offers efficient regeneration. So if you are transmitting a signal to a long distance, it will be attenuated and distorted. By using regenerative repeaters, we can maintain high signal to noise ratio and improve the quality. It is easy to add or drop channels. Disadvantages of PCM the large bandwidth is required for transmission obviously in digital communication this is the biggest disadvantage whatever may be the digital modulation technique it demands more bandwidth compared with analog more attenuation the difference between original analog signal and translated digital signal is called quantization error if you want to reduce this quantization error you have to improve number of quantization levels Encoding, decoding and quantizing circuits of the PCM is very complex. So the circuit complexity is more in PCM compared with analog. Applications of PCM, it is used in telephone voice communication. It is used in compact disk. It is also used in satellite communication system and also so on. The many applications they are utilizing the pulse code modulation signal. Thank you for watching this video. I think this video is useful for you. If, if it is useful, you can like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you all. We will meet again with another video in this particular subject. Thank you.